So I finally got around to watching Rebel Moon, Zack Snyder's attempt of creating his own Star Wars type universe. But did it hit the mark? What's up everybody? How you doing today? It's your man here, Jackson's Gambit, with another movie review for you. Happy Saturday. Hope you guys are all having a good day. So, in Rebel Moon, we have the Empire. I'm sorry, I meant the Mother World. Whose militia, called the Imperium, is going around to different planets in this universe, pretty much asserting their dominance. Consider it like them deboing every single planet, showing them who runs this shit. Oh shit. Here come Debo, give me your stuff. Oh shit. Our main character, Korra, a defective Imperium soldier, now resides in a distant moon who resides with a farming colony. But once the Imperium gets to this distant moon, the leader of the colony thinks that, hey, we'll just tell him that we ain't got much to give him, but we'll give him whatever we can and they'll leave. But Korra knows what's up. So the Imperium and the leader of the colony chop it up. The leader of the colony tells them what's good. And then when the Imperium hear what they don't want to hear, they show that colony what's good by killing their leader. At this point, it's time for Core to step up to the plate. So her and another colony member who's in love with her decide to go around collecting warriors who are willing to help her defend her farming colony for when the Imperium return. If I were to describe this movie, I would think of it of a cross between Star Wars A New Hope, The Seven Samurai, and a bug's life. There were a couple things I liked about this movie, and there were a lot of things I didn't like about this movie. So let me get what I liked about this movie out of the way. The two things I liked most about this movie were the visuals and the fight sequences. Now when I say visuals, I'm talking about the special effects, I'm talking about the creature designs, and I'm talking about the set designs. Netflix spent a lot of money on this movie, and if one thing Zack Snyder is known for, it's creating movies with great visuals. And as for the fight sequences, if you're not used to the warehouse scene in Batman vs Superman with Batman, or the jail scene in Watchmen, I suggest you check that out. The things that I didn't like about this movie was one, the pacing. And what I mean by that is that it felt that he threw too much into this movie and he was just rushing to get to the end. When I watched this movie, I felt as though this should have been a three-parter. So you can equally flesh out the story into three parts so that the audiences can really understand and follow along with what it is that you're trying to say. You're trying to explain the mother world, Korra's backstory, and all these warriors all into one movie and it just felt so crammed. At times in this movie, I thought we were on the same planet when we were actually on a different planet. And by the time I got to know that planet, we were on a different planet. You see, on each planet that they were on, they didn't take the time to explore their surroundings. What kind of planet are we on? They just focused on one specific scene in which this warrior was in, and then they just moved on quickly to the next planet, instead of exploring and fleshing out the environment that we're in. So the audiences can get used to where we are, what kind of environment we're dealing with. That's one thing that Star Wars did right. When they were on Tatooine, it was a desert planet. When Luke went to Dagobah and the Empire Strikes Back, it was more of a swamp planet. When they went to Endor and Return of the Jedi, it was a forest moon. They allowed time to flesh out the surroundings so that we knew exactly where they were instead of focusing on one scene and then moving quickly to the next. Second thing I didn't like about this movie was the character development. Now, every time they picked up a different warrior, all we got was just a small synopsis of who they were, and then that was it, and then they just joined. There was really no fleshed out backstory involving these characters. You know, one person was a warrior, another person was a slave, another person was a failed general. There was no real pushback involving this movie. It just felt like she just kind of showed up and she was like, hey, you don't like the mother world? 
I don't like the mother world. You want to get together? Sure. There was no real discussion in it. There was no pushback. There was no dialogue. I would think that if someone came up to me and was like, hey, you want to join us to take out the mother world? You might die, but you're sacrificing yourself for a good cause. That's a lot to give up right there. Now with Han, it took a while for Han to really get on board with the rebels because at the beginning, all he wanted was money. And then throughout the film, he changed his mind. And this one, she just showed up and was like, hey, you want to join? Mm, yeah. Last thing I didn't like about this movie was the story in general. I thought the story seemed like it was something that I've already seen before. I mean, most of the elements in this movie came from Star Wars itself. A, a defective soldier that joins the good side to take out the enemy. Where have we seen that from? Star Wars. A simple farmer in a colony that ends up being the, the, the head hero in the story. Where have we seen that from? Star Wars. A smuggler with his own ship. Where have we seen that from? Star Wars. Han Solo. I'm Captain of the Millennium Falcon. A militia type evil that's trying to exert dominance in the entire galaxy. Where have we seen that from? Star Wars. A girl whose parents were killed by the very evil that took her in and raised her to become a warrior. Where have I seen that from? Guardians of the Galaxy. Now go in peace. Meet your maker. Concentrate. Females with laser swords. Where have we seen that from? Star Wars. As well as elements from other sci-fi movies. You got Bugbeak from Harry Potter. Say hello to Buckbeak. <laughs> no, 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 no. You got a Fabio looking motherfucker with long hair. It seemed like to me like Zack Snyder took everything that he thought was cool in other sci-fi movies and decided to just throw this into one movie. It was like a crock pot of sci-fi ideas into one movie. Like no, it doesn't. Stop it saying that. And the slow motion. By God, do not get me started on all the slow motion in this movie. I shouldn't have to depend on your director's cut of your film to prove that it's a good movie. Don't put out a half cock story and be like, oh wait, just wait till my director's cut comes out. That's a much better film. To prove that it's a good movie. If it's not a good enough movie for a theater to run, then in my opinion, why put it out in the first place? Now, don't get me wrong. I am a huge Zack Snyder fan. But I have noticed that when I watch his movies, not every idea that he has needs to be put into a movie. I know it looks cool, but you can save that shit for another movie. So if I were to rate this movie, I would rate this movie a 5 out of 10. So for all my sci-fi lovers out there, yeah, it was fun. It had some cool parts in it, but I felt that the story was a bit boring. And I know Zack Snyder was trying to create an r rated type of Star Wars movie, but if I want a Star Wars-ish type of movie, I'll watch the old Star Wars. Not the Disney Star Wars. Don't get me started on that. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed today's movie review. I'll be back with another one later on. But until then, I hope you guys have a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow in the next one. All right? Later, later days, y'all. Peace.